Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dragonfly Gamer UK, and we are back in Station Ears. Today, I want to give a little bit of a tutorial. So, I get quite a few questions about how to control devices within the game, programming. A lot of people struggle with the programming. I know I did when I first started this game. It, it's not an obvious programming language. It's called MIPS. It's quite powerful, and I will cover that in later episodes. But the things you need to know about controlling devices and programming and the various layers. It's like an onion in this game. Everything's like an onion. You can do things a very simple way with limited control. Then there's a sort of intermediate level where you have a bit more control. And there's a sort of outer layer where it's really complex, but you have a lot of control over the systems. Um, so I'm going to start today on the very basics. So before you start typing any code, you can control devices like solar panels LED displays and things like this with logic chips. So this is a very basic level. Um, but to be able to do that, and for any of the program, you need to understand about the networks. So I'm going to kind of cover networking and logic chips in this tutorial. Um, because another one I think people struggle with is understanding how the networks work in Station Ears. So for those who don't know, uh, the cabling, whether it's this um, just normal red cabling or this heavy duty black and white cabling I've got in my hand here, um, it, it's all the same. It both supplies power and network. Forget about this for the minute. This is just something that you can call up in creative mode to supply power to devices when you're trying things out. I'm just in creative mode so I can show this setup. Um, I'm on Mars, by the way, just so you know. Um, so yeah, so networks. So to be able to communicate with things, they need to be on the same network. So for this logic reader, a logic reader, if I just bring one up, I think I've got the logic readers in my hand. Logic kit, here we go. If I bring up the schematic for it, uh, let's go to the logic reader. There we go. You can see, um, and that's the same as that one there. It's just the same chip. You see on the left, we've got a network with a arrow pointing in. On the right, we have a network with an arrow pointing out. And at the top, we have a um, lightning bolt for power. So, as far as this chip is concerned, it will read what is connected to the network on the left, it will output to what is connected on the network on the right, and it will take power from the um, power connection at the top. Now, they don't have to all be separate networks. In this case, I've got them separate networks. So, there's a, a network with something else on it, so it can read something in. There's its output network, and uh, there's its power. So, that's one way of setting it up. And you can tell if I just bring up the screwdriver to so use a screwdriver on these hexagonal pins to change the settings. So this one says in, so it wants to know what's connected to the in. So if I click on there, you can see at the moment it says daylight sensor. Then you can see to the right that is logic reader cycle to daylight sensor. That's because the only thing connected to here is a daylight sensor. So that's all I can connect to. Although I don't know why it's thrown a wobbly. Oh yeah, it's because I've not said that. So, yeah, all I can pick is daylight sensor. Once you pick the daylight sensor or whatever else is connected to it, you then to need you then need to tell it what variable you want. Um, so for a daylight sensor, we have let's go daylight sensor. The available logic we can read, and it tells you here whether you can read and write, is mode act activate. Horizontal, vertical, solar angle, on, prefab hash, solar irradiance, reference ID, and name hash. What you want if you're tracking solar panels, if you're tracking them in the vertical, so from horizon to the highest point in the sky, is a vertical. If you're tracking them um, across the sky, so from left to right, that is a horizontal. So we'll just look at the vertical for now on this one. So I want to read vertical. So I come with my screwdriver onto the variable, var is variable, what variable do you want to pick from that? So the first thing I can do is, it currently says left mouse, none, so it's none selected at the moment. If I click, it says mode. No, I don't want mode. Click again, I get activate, don't activate. Uh, next click is horizontal, don't want horizontal. Next click is vertical, it says vertical. Now I like to turn green because I've picked a valid uh, variable from here for the logic reader to read. In this case, I'm outputting it outputting to this network here, which is a single cable. So that is a whole network, that there. Same as that, that's one network, that's another network. So if I look in here, 
the only thing I should be able to see is a logic reader. And yeah, we've got it there and you can see it says logic reader and no matter how many times I click on it, it all stays logic reader because there's only one thing attached to that network, logic reader. Um, if you've got an error on here, by the way, like if I click on this one, just quickly show you, it'll flush orange. Uh, once you pick a valid reading, a valid um, variable, it'll turn green. If it's off, it'll be red. So you just need to click on it and turn it on. Okay, so in this one we've picked logic reader, so we've picked that. Uh, and we want output to that LED over there. So um, output, this is the out pin. So this is what we've got to pick. And what we've got to use to select the output device. Uh, as you can see, the only output device on here is that. Now that is on that network, but it's not picking it up because that's just providing power. Um, so I can't actually pick that one. If I don't have that link in there, let me just... Do -do. then the LED goes off because it's not getting any power. So one thing, other thing you need to note is these connections, where this has got a separate network and power connection, this LED is a combined network and power connection. So it has to take not only the data signal, but the power as well. So I need to put that cable back in, like so, and it will come back on again. And if you've done that and it's off, just make sure you turn the switch on on top. So right, so we've told that now that we want to output to the LED. The next thing we want to output to, so for an LED, we want to output the signal from there to the setting on the LED display. So again, if we go LED, LED display. Um, these are what we can read and write to. So um, setting is a read write, and that is what will be displayed on the screen. Uh, you've got mode there, so there's uh, various things you can set the mode to. So you can set the mode to power and that would um, put a W after it, so if it was like watts or whatever, or percentage of it depending if you wanted to try and dis display a percentage, say for percentage of charge in a battery, a station battery. Um, power for if you're looking at the power output from a solar cell, you could set that to power to display just watts and I think it's a different colour as well. Uh, or default is just display number. So in this case we just want setting. We're going to leave the mode at zero, so it's just default. And um, screwdriver. And again here we set the output variable. So what variable do you want to send to that? Uh, to that LED. And it's that LED displays variables that we're picking. So if I click on here, you've got mode, setting, on, color, and then mode again. So what we want is setting. So there we go. See the colors changed because I flicked through colour and it was getting a valid reading and it's actually changed the colour of that display but that now is showing us and it's actually set to, to the mode to watts that's good isn't it so in fact that W has been displayed because as I was flicking through we picked watts by mistake uh, we've picked the mode uh, to 2 which set to power so at the moment that solar cell is saying horizontal 118 sorry vertical 68 you can see on there, if you hover over it, the vertical reading is 68.1.2.3. Yeah, that's been fed into here. That's, you can see it's still saying the same thing. Uh, 70 now. That's been output it to there, and you can see that number's going up. Ignore the W. That's just a mistake in the mode as I'm switching through. So here we've got lots of separate networks. And that is one network. But it's because it's connected to the power um, connections, you, you can't see them. They're not connected to network term uh, connections. So same with that. There's no network connection on that one actually, which is why you're not seeing it on network here, because it's not got a network connection. Now the same setup. I've got exactly the same setup here, except I've got everything connected together. So I've got this loop through here to here to here, and the reason I did this is now I can show you. If I use a screwdriver on this pin here, which is the in, I've now got LED display, two LED displays, three LED displays. So I've got one, two, three. Um, then I've got batch writer, which is that, which is the one I actually want. Uh, no, sorry, which is what's going to be outputting to. I don't want that. Um, then we've got because we're looking at the input here, so I want that one. So then we've got daylight sensor. That's the one we want. That's a daylight sensor. So we know we're reading in, and we want to read. Let's say the horizontal setting on this one. So at the minute it's non. Click mode. Click again. Activate. Click again. Horizontal. 
So now taking the horizontal reading from there, which is 127, you can see here it says 126, 127. Um, that has been outputted to here, which is, I know it's feeding back in on itself, but because uh, we're not interested, this isn't interested on what's connected here, it's just outputting on our cable. The fact this is all connected together doesn't bother the chip. This one, we've got to tell it what input we want, same as we did over there, but this time, because everything's connected together, there'll be everything on here. So if I click on A, you've got LED display small, LED display small, LED display small, logic reader, which is that one, which is what we want. And that's it, that's all we can do on there. Uh, just all we've got is the LEDs, three LEDs and a logic reader. Uh, it's not picking up the daylight sensor, is it? No, I don't know why it's not picking up the daylight sensor. Okay, that's odd. It is connected. Okay, and maybe it's because that's reading, I don't know. Okay, anyway, it's the LED, it's a logic reading we want. That's what we're picking up. That's what we'll set that to. Uh, the output, because this is a... Oh, let me just cover something else. This is a logic writer, so this will write to one device. So if I have another LED display on here... Um, Let's stick it that way, just know it's upside down, but I'm just doing this for sake of showing you, turn it on. That one's um, showing the number, this one's a zero. Now, the reason that is that we've got this one set to... The first LED, sorry, out. The first LED display, which is that one. If I switch this to the second LED... And set the variable to setting you see this one's now changing and that one stopped this can get really confusing when you're trying to do write a lot of different things and this is where the and this is where the labeler comes into it uh, into use so what you can do with the labeler is you pick it up in your hand right click click on this one say um, we want that to be called vertical display Uh, confirm that and we'll leave we'll call this one I don't know say a uh, horizontal display now when I use the screwdriver on the output our uh, LEDs are now shown as no longer shown as LED smalls they're now showing as horizontal display so it's that one that one sorry yep and vertical display if i put the cursor over it you can see it shows you what the name is and then because we've done that we've got to select what we want to display on there back to setting and you see that's now changing again that one is just stuck there it'll not do anything else turn it off turn it on it'll, it'll just display the last setting it had and that will not change now and it will never change unless i pick horizontal display and setting and now this one will start changing yeah, that one's changing now, and that one's stopped. So that's just to be to be where a logic writer can only write to one device at a time. On this side, I've got a batch writer. It's the same setup. Network in, network out, power at the top. The pins are the same. Input, output type, variable. But this one says type, rather than just out. So the reason it's asking for a type is what type of device you want to write to so in this case I've got three LED displays um, I'm using them just as an example these could be three solar panels and you could be writing the, the angular information to them so rather than having to have a one logic writer for every LED uh, solar panel you can use a batch and as long as a batch writer and as long as your LED displays are all the same type and what I mean by type is um, Let's go to solar panel kit, heavy solar panel kit. Yeah, that'll do. So what we've got here is we've got a solar panel heavy dual, a solar panel heavy without the dual. Uh, the dual is um, when you have both the power and the network on the same pin going into the solar panel. 
and the heavy is where it's got separate network and power and if I click on these if I click on this you see it's prefab hash is minus one five four five five seven four four one three if I click on this one it's minus nine three it's a different number and it will be writing to this prefab have hash effectively saying um, write everything with that number with that prefab hash so all of these same type of solar panels will have that prefab hash and it will write the signal to them in this case we'll write it to an LED display uh, and its prefab hash is that so it's writing to that prefab hash on this network and because they've all got the same prefab hash or the same device or type of item on the network they all receive the signal so you see here the only other thing I've got on here I think is um, the daylight sensor there's only one daylight sensor so I don't really want to write to that um, the batch writer because it's connected back to itself but you don't want to write to itself uh, the logic reader we don't want to write that because i take the signal from that so it's the led small so there's only one led small on there and that's because it's all of them it's all those items of the same type and then you write the same thing in this case setting to all three of them at once um i use this in one of my channels uh to display the power for a um sterling engine so I've got one right by the door in the Stirling engine room and I've got another one down by the furnace because I use waste heat from the furnace to drive the Stirling engine and I like to see when the power output from the Stirling engine is dropped off so I know I can send more hot gas to it to get it going again. So that's this is why it's useful. So that's a batch writer, that's a logic writer, that's a single network, that's a single network, that is a single network. And on this one everything here is one single networks and it's important to understand these networks and I'll probably stress this quite over stress this quite a bit but it's important to understand these networks now there are different ways of segregating networks one way is to as you can see here logic readers logic writers that they, they segregate networks another way is um, let me just bring up some bits things that can block a network so as i said before logic reader logic writer can block a network i'll explain why i've connected that together in a minute but for now just assume that's also connected so um, a logic reader can break a network a logic writer can break a network apu power con i call it an apu apologies it's power controller as we click on here the only thing well there's nothing we can't select anything from there there's nothing on that network because that is blocking this signal from any of these devices here nothing is getting through that so I can't actually pick anything so that's blocking a network so that's now a separate network same goes for transformers I turn transformer on just whack up some power this one needs about 10 watts so there's more than the power come out of there turn it on again I can't pick anything because that is blocking the network so you can use power controllers transformers to segregate your networks uh, they still allow power to pass through them but they don't allow the data signal to pass through them if you want to control this APU you've got to be connected to this side of it um, and you can't control the transformers I don't believe if remotely um, let me just have a look I'm saying that I don't believe you can oh yeah you must be able to read some of the settings read or you can lock it okay so you can so it must be this side you have to be attached to which is the power inside because i'm connected to the power outside and i can't actually read anything from there so you must have to be on this side to control that same as you do with the apu so the power controller um, anything on the output side is isolated now supposing you want to isolate a network uh, from power but you still want to read some data across you can do it with these but what you can also do is use something called a logic mirror and what this does is it's reading the data from this network on this side uh, and it allows you to mirror any of the devices that are connected on this side so in this example here I have 
I've disconnected that solar panel, uh, solar sensor. I've connected that one into this network, which is going around and connecting this logic mirror. Um, I can then select anything that's connected to this side of the network, this side of the chip, the input side. So I go to the uh, daylight sensor. There we go. Now on the logic reader, instead of picking that daylight sensor, I pick the logic mirror. So if I click through, logic mirror, I think I just turn out which variable I want, and that is mirroring that device. So I need to tell it I want the horizontal or the vertical. This hasn't changed. I'm still reading the data from that logic reader and writing it to these displays. So now you can see they're changing from that daylight sensor on this network. And that has allowed me to pass information from one digital network to another without the power being connected. So be aware you can do that. The most logic uh, devices you use are logic reader, logic writer, batch writer. There is also a comparator uh, which you can use to do some math with. Some other things you can do with the logic. So this is just using logic readers, logic writer, um, batch writer, logic mirror, just to transport uh, transfer information around and be able to read the data from these devices and write the data to these devices. But what if you want to do something with that data? So another good example is you have one solar sensor and it reads a horizontal and a vertical. Now that is very much plane dependent. So um, yeah, let's take this one up a moment. Actually, no, I've got another sensor kit on me somewhere. Sensor kit, there we go. So let's put a sensor kit. Which way is that facing? That way. There. So if we now look at the uh, horizontal and the vertical, it's 3102 on that one. And this one is 1460. So depending on what plane the solar array is placed on depends on what readings you get out of it. Why is this important? Well, it means that when you want to read the horizontal plane, um, or the vertical plane to be fair, you, it, you tend to put, oh, I'll personally put them on a flat surface like this, so pointing up. That way the vertical is the correct reading all the time. And that's how high the sun is in the sky. So that seems 55 degrees up there. Which is probably not far off wrong. The vertical is how high it is from the horizon. So that's 90 there, 0 right above us, 45, which is around about what it is at the moment, is sort of halfway between the bullet right above you and on the horizon. That's with this blade flat like this. Um, that is quite good for using for solar panels, but you're not getting the right reading for your horizontal. Because if you look, I'm facing a 180 degrees at the moment. If you look down here, um, but that's saying that the horizontal is 40 degrees. But if I look at the sun, the sun's actually 129. Um, I'm almost 180 out. So what you can do is you can use a math unit. So this is a um, get the right one logic processor. So I'll just come over here so we can see it. It has various things. So there is a math unit uh, which allows you to do, uh, it has an input on the left and on the right. Let's look at this one here. Input 1, input 2, and then you can decide what you do want to do with the output. So in this one we've got add, subtract, power, multiply, uh, mod, which is what's left after we divide, after divide, uh, log, so logarithmic scale, uh, divide again, I don't know what that on 2 is. Then we're back to add. So if we just look at add or subtract on the main ones. Um, that's a math unit. Then we've got the... That's a math unit, sorry. Then we've got the comparator unit. Select unit. Min max. And urinary math unit. I think we're back to oh, gate unit. Um... I'm not going to go through all these. The ones you'll use the most are the math, to be fair. Um, I don't think I've ever used any of the other gate, these other ones. Other people probably have, but I've never used them. I've never had need to use them. All I've ever used is a math unit to take two numbers uh, to work out where the sun is in the sky. And so one of the inputs 
in this case is hopefully you're following this um, still connected to my network so it's still reading from that um, daylight sensor over there through here through a math mirror through that logic chip out on this network so I'm reading in this side um, the logic reader so you see it is logic reader left mouse uh, on this side I am reading logic math sorry logic memory and that's the only thing connected on this side and this is logic memory and logic memory you can set the number by using these pins the big pins go up in hundreds so if I click on a one of those it goes by hundred the small pins goes up by ones if you press C while they're clicking on one of these pins the big pins it goes up by tens if you press C when you click on the small one it goes up by a tenth or point one and that's add this side is subtract exactly the same hold C and it there yeah, goes down by point 0.1 and if I hold C on this one it goes down by tens and if I just click directly on it, it goes down by hundreds so let's just get that back to 100 I've now got this those set up so 100 coming in outside the signal from there actually would be 90 let's put it in 90 because that's in reality what it would be you'd be looking at doing 90 there we go um, got the signal coming in from the daylight sensor going at that side we have the 90 coming in from this side and now we can add them together which we're doing so that is 113 plus 90 should be 203 and yeah we're there and that's just going going to the logic reader logic readers reading the output from the math unit and sending it to the display um, ignore that that's just there the power of this and this um, so yeah, so that's another way you can isolate things by using a logic chip. This time it's a, a logic processor unit. So there's another type of memory which is this hash generator. So once you put that down you can click on here and you can pick a specific item and it will output the hash number. So let's see what we've got here we can compare it against. Um, logic gate, what's its hash number? 1942 so let's just go against that logic gate see if we can find logic gate in here that'll be your logic processor that's the closest you can get so that would output the hash number for a logic processor kit um, other ones we've got is a logic processor we've done I see housing um, let me just take up one of these easiest way so you've got logic reader which we discussed that reads some information from a device logic writer writes to a single device batch writer writes to single type of equipment of devices or single type of devices uh, logic mirror is that one there so we take an input and pass it over to another network uh, slot reader I couldn't find anything about a slot reader uh, so I don't know anything about it uh, batch reader you can use it to read the same signal from a type of devices so say if you had three batteries you could read the um, power rating of the Mahabharat charge we've got in there it then averages that and outputs it uh, reagent reader just reads um, the materials I believe uh, and then yeah, yeah no, use have use, never got a logic switch I've never used I've never used that I've never used that I've never used that I've never used that one yet I'm tempted to use that one to try it I've not used a slot reader I have used a logic mirror and I've used batch writer logic writer and logic reader I guess that one's good if you want to set a switch up in here to do something and uh, maybe it's launch a rocket or something like that you certainly used to be able to do a lot more with these in the previous iteration the rocket used to use a loads of these logic readers writers and things to loads of displays and a, a leave it and launch a rocket you could do it that way but now with the new programming bit on the computer it's made it much more easier so anyway guys hopefully you found this interesting please let me know um, I think I've rambled on way too much I've got in way more depth than I intended to I'm probably going to cut some of this but I might um, so yeah so logic reader reads a single device logic writer writes to a single device batch writer writes to a 
single device type, in this case LEDs. Uh, logic mirror, you can imitate a device on another network. So in this case, we were mirroring or imitating the daylight sensor and then reading that logic reader. So that literally just imitates that. Um, memory, you can set uh, a num numerical value. Hash memory, hash generate generates a hash number uh, for device, which is select using the pin. And then we've got uh, processor units, which can do various mathematical operations. I tend to just use a math unit, if I'm honest. But that means two inputs, obviously in math, in this case, a memory input and an input from a daylight sensor. And then you output that to whatever you want. Um, segregate networks, like I said, logic memory will segregate a data network. Uh, but allow you to read across from it. Transformer will segregate the power. That segregates the power, by the way, but allows you to read some of the data across. A transformer segregates the data and to a limited extent the power because you control how much power flows through it. An area power controller segregates the data, but it allows power to pass through. And if you drop a battery in it, as I'm sure most of you do, gives you a limited amount of um, storage as well for power. So that's good early game for like running things like your printers before you get the station batteries. I also find them useful in airlocks. So if the main power bus goes down, you run out of power and you've got a battery power control unit with a battery in it. It gives you that bit of redundancy so you can open and shut your airlocks but you still got you know for the power from there without relying on the station power although it doesn't last forever and then we've got various different types of math unit feel free to go and look them up i don't know what all of these do because i don't use them and like i say this is just an rtg which you use in creative mode just to provide power so that's logic gates logic chips and networks boy did i ramble on sorry guys i did actually plan this out and then i threw it out the window <laughs> so uh, let me know if that's helpful to any of you please hit like subscribe i do have a patreon page if you'd like to subscribe to that that's for now strong flight gamer wishing you good night <laughs>